I wanted to show you my palette. It's a kind of a small palette, but it has a big enough mixing area that I can use for smaller paintings. And uh, the first thing I do is I spray all my colors before I start. Mist all the way around so that they're softening. And that way it's all ready to go uh, when you're ready to paint. I thought to, uh, today let's paint a cypress tree. I was over at the, uh, near the North Carolina coast recently and took some photographs. And uh, I did this little painting. It wasn't a night shot, but I'm going to turn the, the tree that I found, the cypress tree, into an evening shot like this. I've penciled in a circle here, but I didn't complete the pencil line down here because I don't want a pencil line showing through this yellow wash. I want that to just fade right on down. So I took the pencil from here to here, and that's as far as I'm going with it. Okay, now the first thing I did was I took uh, some lemon yellow, there's yeah, some lemon yellow in there, paint that shape in, get close to the edge, I'm using a mop brush right here, but I'm going to go to the edges, I'm going to pull out a, a nice round brush, I mean there's all kinds of brushes you can, you can use. Uh, from sables to synthetics uh, and you can find good brushes uh, without spending a fortune. Okay, so this is I think about a number 8 or number 10 round brush. This particular brush happens to be by Rosemary and Company. So there's, there's the moon. I'm going to take clear water now and just fade this down. Okay. I'm going to dry this and then come right back. Okay, I've got that dry. So let's come in here with a mixture of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. I want a pretty deep color up here around the moon. Again, I'll take a round brush, come up in here, just carefully paint around that shape. And on this side also here. I'll just fill this in and as I go down here I'm going to start adding water to my mixture so the blue gets a little lighter as it goes down the page. I've got my uh, watercolor block, Archer's watercolor block. I've got it uh, sitting on a three ring binder. That gives me a little bit of a slant and uh, helps me control the washes. Again, I'm rinsing my brush between strokes here. I want this to go soft. Kind of clean up the edges here so it'll dry a little faster. Okay. So lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and added water to it as I went down to get it lighter in the foreground here. It looks like I may have bumped that, so let's just kind of clean that up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's dry this. Okay, that's dry now. So I'm going to put the tree in, but I'm not going to uh, start with the trunk. Uh, 
depends on the situation, but sometimes I'll start with the trunk. But here I'm going to start with the foliage, the leaves that are on here. And uh, I'm going to, again, you're going to use my mop brush. This is by Creative Mark. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill. This happens to be a number uh, four. I'm going to get in there with some, uh, some uh, sap green, some gambos. that. I'm going to fan the brush out and just gently touch the paper. I'm going to leave a lot of gaps in here because I want that moonlight to, to peek through. This is the same mixture but I added a little more ultramarine blue to it. get some moss coming off of here so let's just drag some strokes down I did a workshop earlier this year at Pocosin Arts, uh, it was Columbia, North Carolina, and uh, that's where I found the reference for these trees here. But if you don't have a lot of paint in your brush and you drag it quickly, you get this nice dry brush effect, which uh, works really great for this moss that's coming off here. Okay, for the trunk of the tree, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. I'm going to darken that with some uh, Payne's gray. And I'm going to put part of the tree in here and kind of finish this section on it. And then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you the finished piece and add a few more details to it. This is mostly uh, gambos here, and I'm going pretty, pretty heavy on the pigment on this because I want it to give me a good coverage here. So I'm going to grab some uh, gambos and a little bit of cadmium orange too in here just for a, a little color change. I'm going to uh, add a few more details here and uh, add a little texture at the very end here.
As you can see, I've added some smaller branches in here. I'm using this little script brush, number one script brush. It's great for nice, delicate little, little branches. Um, again, I hold it out on the end, uh, let the brush kind of take over. I don't want to have too much control over it. It'll look more natural if you let the brush kind of wander around. Okay. And then I did do some opaque work over top of this. I took some gamboge and I took some uh, permanent white, titanium white. So gamboge, some titanium white. And I'm going to use a mop brush to put this on. Let me just show you the mop brush. Uh, it's by Creative Marks. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill. I'm using a number four here. But that's typical right there, the stroke you'll get with it. But if you take it, drag it, turn it vertical, and give it a quarter turn, it fans out really nice. And you get some nice dry brush effects, which work terrific on trees. So it's load your brush up, drag it, give it, take it vertical, quarter turn, and then it fans out. If you have a lot of water in it, it'll close right back up on you. So you may have to drag it a couple times till it uh, stays fanned out for you. So here's some sap green, some ultramarine blue. Just add a few little touches here by, by dragging this brush down. I'm trying to get a variety of values in here. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to take a some gambos, titanium white. Just do a little splatter in here. I got it fairly opaque too because I do want it to show up. Okay, here's the same color using a mop brush. Just kind of, again, just barely, barely touch the surface of the paper and draw it down. That's titanium white and uh, gamboge. That's a little heavy right there, so I'll just tap that out. Okay, I think that's pretty good. If you'd like to sponsor a workshop, please contact us. We'd uh, love to come to your area. Thanks for watching.